everyone's observed is that people with pain move differently. And our assumption in from many professions who deal with people with pain is that there is a relationship between movement and pain. That there is some relationship between how you move and the pain that you perceive. And then the idea is that if you modify the way they move, maybe that'll have some benefit. And our understanding is beginning to show us that for some people that is probably correct, but for other people that may not be so, as, as accurate. Our assumption very simply is that you move differently to protect the part that has been injured or is potentially painful. And what, what we've shown in a number of experiments is that if we give people pain, they do protect. But we've recently shown that some of the, if we, if we use some clever methodology that allows us to separate out whether the, um, how a person's adapting and whether they get pain relief, what we show is that in many cases, people get pain relief despite the fact that they're not actually reducing the amount of noxious input coming from their tissues, but they still perceive a reduction of pain. So it highlights that there's not necessarily a one-to-one -one link between the adaptation that you make in the way you move and the pain that you perceive. One of the things that is become, has been spoken about for many years is the fact that muscle undergoes substantial change in people who have pain and injury, and we've not really understood why. And so, for example, in the back muscles, there is fatty infiltration, atrophy, there is connective tissue change. The same thing occurs in shoulder muscles in people who've got um, supraspinatus tendinopathies. There's changes that occur in, in many different regions of the body. And clearly, if your muscle is modified, you're going to have a change in the way that the, that muscle is going to be able to generate force and that will have some impact on the way that you move. So a lot of our work has been trying to understand if these muscle changes are occurring, why is that the case? From one perspective, it seems counterintuitive. If, you're, if you have an injury to a structure, you would imagine that you'd actually want enhanced control to be able to compensate for, uh, compensate for that or to encourage, encourage recovery. But in fact, what we see is reduced capacity of muscle because of atrophy, fatty infiltration and fibrosis. I think one of the most exciting things recently is our observation that there is this interaction between the immune system and the motor system. So in the pain literature, there is a, a, a large interest in interaction at the spinal cord and in the higher levels of the brain between immune system and the um, and pain system and what we're interested what we're finding here is that the immune system is involved in some of the changes that are occurring so one of the interesting observations from that is that the muscle changes do seem to be related to immune changes in the muscle and the clinical assumption you'd make from that is let's just give anti-inflammatories to, to reverse those changes and some of our recent data suggests that maybe it's not that route we should go down but in fact exercise because we know that exercise has potent effects on the immune system and we've just finished a, a mouse study that shows that we can reverse and prevent these changes by using exercise so it's not simply anti-inflammatories to, to dull down the immune response but in fact use activity to change that.